I better get to the dining hall, alright? Did something happen? Because it feels like something must happen very, very soon, either today or tomorrow. So, dining hall it is. You're not sneaking there again, huh, Kyoko? Alright, who's here? Pretty much oh. everyone. Taka and Kyoko are not here today. Wow. You know? Kyoko's still on guard, probably. Hmm. I have no idea about Taka. Damnation! May as well forget about that guy! So, um... You don't have to get so mad. You know? They're rivals in love. What are you gonna do? Hmm. Don't put me on the same level as that... That virgin! I might catch his virginity! Ha! <laughs> Is Hifumi new at, like, trash-talking? Because... To be completely honest here, yeah? And that's not... I'm not I don't mean to offend you, Hifumi, but... Out of the two of you, if one were to be a virgin, I would probably say it's you, Hifumi. Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course, but, you know, just saying. Just saying. But... Nah, my guess is you're already infected. Aw, oh, hero laying it down. Wait, can you really catch it? Oh my god, are her bra brains in her boobs? <laughs> Stop being vulgar. Let's eat breakfast. But as soon as my hands approach my food... <laughs> oh, that voice! The doors to the dining hall exploded open, and a figure appeared. <laughs> uh, genocide Jack or Jill. My foods don't need cutting or scissoring, okay? So in the end, it's you, Genocide Jack, and Byakuya? That's enough. Don't bother why. Uh, asking why we arrived at the same time. The answer should be obvious. Yep. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> I'm wearing red lingerie today. Huh? Huh? I don't think anyone wanted to know. I actually was kind of curious. Huh? Hold on a second. You. Huh? huh? Hmm. What's your top level? Age? What's your top level like? 35, 22, 33? You start out big on top to try and look thinner down south! You SOB! Look at your melons! They're seriously gargantuan! Do you dunk them in milk every night or something? <laughs> What's Genocide Jill's obsession with big boobs? Ooh. I mean, sure, I have them too, but you know, she seems to like dislike them rather than like them. You're starting to freak me out. No forgiveness. Oh yeah, Sakura defending Hina. If you lay a finger on Hina, I will show you no mercy. <sighs> so, what do you want? Don't tell me Kyoko died. Please do not tell me Kyoko died. I'd rather have Taka die than Kyoko. Surely you are not here to join us for breakfast. Naturally. Of course not. I came to hear a story. A story? A story that nobody's bothered to tell me yet. Are you talking about Alter Ego? Mm. Sorry, but we can't talk about that right now. What? Why not? Huh. Because of certain circumstances. <sighs> Up till now you haven't given a crap about anything. And now you're all concerned? I don't buy it. It's all clear now. I've just made a decision. When we get out of here, I'm going to feed your body to the vultures. <laughs> what kind of messed up dictator are you? Yeah, even Kim Jong-un wouldn't do that. What? But isn't this a democracy? Or would you exclude those who don't fit into your tyrannical majority? D that's not what we're doing. That's fine. Well, whatever. If nothing else, tell me what's going on with Taka. When I saw him yesterday, I happened to notice something seemed off, so I was curious. Indeed. Taka has become utterly useless. Celeste! You don't have to say it like that! I see. Did his spirit collapse or something? Was he unable to withstand this environment? Those men who clothe themselves in the cheap fabric of justice are often the first to fall. <laughs> But perhaps that will make things all the more interesting. Interesting? Such ignorance. Let me leave you with a bit of advice. Don't come to rely on false camaraderie. 
or you'll reap its bitter reward. What the heck? That's why you came? To give us that amazing advice? <laughs> it seems I am unwelcome here. Then I will grant you your desire and remove myself. Mm, yes, yes. Let's get out of here. Stop talking. You don't need to come with me. Yep. You don't have to play hard to get, Master. You can just play hard. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Byakuya started to slowly back out of the room. He started picking up speed, and soon he was sprinting out of the dining hall. Oh no, we gotta follow him. <laughs> what? He ran away. So now he's running hard to get. I see. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Um. So. At the end there, what was that all about? Uh, um... Just now, Byakuya was like... Um... Maybe he's like the mean guy who starts acting different, or getting all flustered when things change. Hmm. Guess so. I don't know, I don't trust this. Those of us left in the dining hall finished our breakfast and then went back to our rooms. More free time? Huh. Hmm, what to do today? Wow, there's a lot of free time here. Not that I mind, but you know, I'm just more scared of fucking it up again. Alright, so Kyoko is in the laundry, yeah? I really want to talk to her again. Maybe, what if talking to her is actually just futile and completely useless because she doesn't seem to be the person to open up about stuff either and she is just so mysterious and I feel like in the, the time that we've been here, we haven't learned a single thing about her where we just could kind of say like, oh, that's really fitting of her characteristic, you know? Or really like, oh, that's so Kyoko. And like, none of that. Whereas with some people, you're just like, oh, yeah, that really... Or you, Because we can't even manage to fit one particular item that we got from the Mono Mono machine thingy that we can fit with Kyoko. So my plan was either like, yeah, I'm either going to go back to the machine, try and hopefully get something that would think like, oh, yeah, that would fit to Kyoko. Because I feel like giving... Because the whole present giving, as far as I've noticed so far, and I could be completely wrong about this, but you, if you give them a present that they like, you actually get more information out of them. Because I remember with... Hifumi? I gave him a very nice present, the princess thing, and he was like, oh yeah, and then we really got into a big conversation. Whereas our conversation with Kyoko have been really, really short. So I feel like either Kyoko is just not a very talkative person and talking with her during free time is completely futile and useless or you need to give her the right presence to be able to, you know, get stuff out of her information or just anything about her. So I'm kind of willing to gamble it again, but I have to go back to the Mono Mono machine and get me something. Alright, let's go Kyoko, take two. I'm not sure if, like, I got, I spent like 50 coins. But, I'm not sure if I've got one item that will make her think like, ooh, I kind of like this. So, we'll see what happens. Who set this all up? And why did they choose us? There are so many mysteries. Hmm. Yep, we're gonna talk wow. with Kyoko for a while. I'm in no position to tell you what to do. You're free to do as you wish, right? But I have my own way of doing things. That's perfectly fine by me. I joined Kyoko while we searched the school. We didn't say anything to each other. Kyoko and I grew a little closer today, alright. Would you like to give her a present? Let's try this again. What on earth can we possibly freaking give her? The only thing that was like, I actually got really happy when I got the flotation donut because like, oh yes, we could give this to Hina, but... The only thing that I can think of is this overflowing lunchbox. Because lunchbox, a bento, is something that everybody loves, right? So I feel like that's the only thing out of the new ones that I could possibly give her. She doesn't strike me as a person that loves jewelry like rings or, or uh, watches or that sort of stuff. So, I mean, the Emperor Thong, I got two of them, so it's kind of a stretch. Like, yeah, do I really want to give that to her? But... Okay, I'm just gonna give her the bento because that seems like the the best possible choice. So I'm just gonna give that to her. So this is something you don't see too often. Do you mind if I keep it? I'd like to take a closer look at it, of course. Admire my food that I got out of the mono mono machine from her. For her, does that mean she liked it? Hmm. Quiet as ever. 
I guess she doesn't like to waste her words. Hey, um, Kyoko? If you're expecting a conversation, don't. There's no need for it. But, I mean, don't you think talking is important? I mean, that's, I guess there is one thing that we could say like about Kyoko. Besides mysterious, another word would be indeed very quiet. I feel like she only talks when she feels like there is really something that needs to be said. And when she some says something, it's not useless. It's not like, you know, filler or whatever. What she says is actually straight to the point. I feel like if we're gonna get out of her, or out of here, we all need to be on the same page. And to do that, we need to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. You could certainly make the argument that forming friendship may help prevent killings. So... But are you asking for some kind of deep connection? Huh? Because... You could just be deceiving us, pretending to be everyone's friend so that you can gather information. Kyoko is like me, very, very suspicious of everyone. N no! That's Why? not... Well then, let's do a quick test, shall we? A test? That's right. If you're as gung-ho on friendship as you claim, this should be an easy question. Uh, okay, so I just have to answer your question? Is that it? So then... Are you ready? You consider Hina one of your friends, yes? And? If that's true, what is her ultimate ability? That's an easy one. Hina's ultimate ability, she's training for the Olympics and... Really? Her ultimate ability is nice body that's in there? Like sure, that's definitely true, but I wouldn't call it an ultimate ability. Obviously it's swimming, so yeah. Hina's the ultimate swimming pro, of course. Correct. Well, asked and answered. It would seem... Then your pleas of camaraderie are true. Wow, that was too easy of a question, Kyoko. I was actually expecting a much, much more difficult question. And it's kind of weird that based on that easy question and that we got the right answer, she's just like, oh yeah, all right, I guess your motives are true about creating friends here. Like, that was too easy. Of course. <laughs> yes, of course. Such a foolishly open person as you could never lie. Everyone would know right away. Again with that foolishly open stuff. So then... Okay then, as promised, what would you like to know about me? Oh yes, we're getting there! Okay, um, let's see. What school did you used to go to before you came so... here? Before I came here? Hmm, I guess I was living abroad. Abroad? Was it an exchange bro program? Or do your parents work overseas or something? Hmm, my parents? I suppose? Why all the question marks? Is it, is, okay, is she the ultimate person that questions everything, which is why there are always like question marks? You know? M because she's unsure of anything at all, that's why she always questions everything. Like a child, a child always is like, why? Oh, kids always ask why, right? Uh, to everything. Why is the sun green? What the fuck? Why is the sun blue? Okay. Why is water blue? Because, or why? What the fuck am I even... Okay, let's start that one again. Kids were always asked of like, oh, why, why is the grass green? Why are the clouds in the sky? You know, that sort of stuff. And it seemed like she's always questioning everything as well. It's either that, that could be sort of make sense for her ultimate question mark, question mark, question mark. Or she actually, I don't, I don't know, either got brainwashed or, or lost her memory somehow or really doesn't know about this stuff because... She seems to genuinely not know, and she's like wondering, like, hmm, my parents, I, I guess. Anyway, okay, so she was living abroad because of her dad's job. So what kind of work does he do? Uh, foreign government? Top secret clearance? More question marks? Okay, so he does top secret work for other governments. All I can think of is... Assassin? <sighs> I kept on my end of the deal. Goodbye. This should be enough, right? I'm leaving now. She left without even waiting for a reply. She's so full of mystery. And hearing what she had, had to say just added even more mystery on top of everything. Well, at least we got something. We got something, so that is a good thing. 
got something. Right, once we're all done, I headed back to my room for a little while. I think we have one more person to be able to uh, spend some free time with. Alright, still have some time. I can't just sit around and do nothing. So we already talked with Kyoko. Um, I feel like because we have a really awesome present to give to uh, Hina, either the, the swimsuit or the like, you know, flotation donut, I'm gonna find uh, try and find Hina, which is right there in the dining hall. Are you still there? Where's Kyoko? No, 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 no. I'm going as far away from Genocide Jack as I possibly can. Hell freaking no. Right, Hina. For some reason, I thought I could walk up to her. A person's ability is measured by the power they display at the point where pressure is applied. Yeah. That's a quote from the famous baseball player, Kenji Jojima. Yeah, totally. I think that uh, what he means is that you only really see how strong a person is when they're under pressure. I wonder how strong I can really be. Hmm. Should I talk with Hina? Yeah, let's you talk got with it. Hina. Because she, I feel like she's kind of important too because... You know, she was in the opening scene, not that it meant too much because... All that, that opening scene of chapter 3 really was, was just her discovering Alter Ego, right? Thinking it was Chihiro's ghost at first, but I don't know. I, I like to think that she might play a bigger role into things later on, even in this chapter already. So yeah, getting to know Hina is definitely a good thing. Okay, let's go to the pool! Swim time! Oh, but uh, don't stare, okay? I don't actually have a swimsuit, just a shirt. And when it gets wet, it's kind of embarrassing. Embarrassing for only one person. Although, I wasn't embarrassed before, but now I kind of am. I wonder how come... Oh, do you like me too, Hina? To be honest, I actually don't trust anyone who, uh, who likes me, because remember Sayaka saying that she kind of liked us, and we all know how that turned out, so yeah. Shouldn't really trust anyone once again. I went swimming with Hina, who seemed kind of embarrassed. You know, <laughs> this is the funny thing, right? We have the swimsuit, and now it's gonna be weird to give her the swimsuit, right? Because now she's gonna think we're perverted for giving her the swimsuit after we went swimming as a present. Would you like to give her a present? Yes, alright. I don't think Hina's gonna think like that, right? But it's just so weird. We just went swimming and she said like, you know, she explicitly said, I don't have a swimsuit, I only have a shirt. And then we're actually gonna give her the swimsuit afterwards, after all that has happened and they're like, yeah. All right, we're gonna do it anyway. She's not gonna mind, right? She's gonna actually love this. And com com uh, competition swimsuit for women. Its design is to become one with the water and it claims to increase swimming speed by 10%. Bam! What? I can keep this, right? Right? <sighs> Yay! Ultra stoked! Seeing Hina so pleased with something I gave her makes me happy. Hmm. Oh man! Oh man! She realized! What's up? Okay. I'm getting totally fired up! What? How come? <laughs> How come does it matter? Now that I'm revved up, I need to get it out! Let's race! I, I don't think that's a good idea. I wouldn't stand a chance anyway. That's right! Really? Well, I don't mind a solo run. Alright, I'll spectate. Well, hold on. You always seem so excited, Hina. What's your deal? Hey, are you making fun of me? No, why would you immediately think that? N no, I'm just impressed. Hmm. Really? I used to know this one guy. He was always like, Hina, you're like a super spaz. Okay, who the hell is that guy? I would beat him up right now. Super spaz? Yeah. He, like, he'd see me wearing shorts in winter, and he'd say stuff like that. Okay, that's a little bit crazy, but... But if you lose to the cold like that, it just means you weren't dedicated enough. Haha. <laughs> I actually like Hina's tenacity, she's just like, hell no, Colt, you're not gonna beat me. I'm actually gonna taunt you by wearing shorts, like, yeah, Colt, you can't get to me. Wow, you did stuff like that and didn't get you sick? You got it all wrong! Getting sick is for the weak! If you're really dedicated, winter means even lighter clothes. It's all part of your training. 
training, huh? Hmm. So, like, are you the type who gets sick easy? Actually, yeah, me too. <laughs> See? You're soft. You need more training. Okay. I've got the perfect remedy to keep someone like you as fit as a fiddle. Huh? What kind of remedy? Yeah. Actually, I do this myself every morning. You just strip down to your waist and then take a dry towel and start rubbing down your bare skin, okay? What? I call it... I call it a... Huh? What do I call it again? A way to keep healthy strip by stripping down and rubbing a towel across your skin. Doesn't that just mean drying yourself off? Let's take a shot at this. Towel treatment, yoga, bamboo beatdown. I guess the most obvious one out of the three would be towel treatments? Is it something like towel treatments? You got it! Oh my god! Yeah, that's it! I love going out on my apartment balcony, stripping down, feeling the wind on my skin. God, it feels so amazing! I never let a morning pass without getting in a good rub down. Oh my god, the innuendos. Wait, so you went out on your balcony and stripped down? Oh my god, can I live across from your balcony? And you're okay with the hats? <laughs> you should give it a try. If you haven't got your health, you haven't got anything. I'm pretty sure if I were to do that outside on my balcony, people would call the police, they would call the cops right then and then, and they would be at my house and within 5 minutes and I'll be put in jail. So, yeah, it's not gonna, it doesn't work for guys, you know, it doesn't work for guys. I'd hate to see you catch a cool or something. Right, Heenan's report card has been updated. More skill points, awesome. Right, after being introduced to a unique sickness prevention method, I went back to my room. I'm actually gonna try that, okay? I, whenever I feel like I'm getting a little bit sick, I'm just gonna strip down naked to the, uh, to the waist and just start rubbing myself with a towel. I mean, that, that sounds like a foolproof plan, right? You're just gonna, you know, I think the thing how it works exactly is that whatever possible bad feelings you have inside of you that might think that would make you sick, the, the towel is gonna soak it up, okay? That's how it works. So that's why you rub the towel on your skin so that the sickness gets soaked in by the towel. And then like, bam, it works like that and you're no longer sick anymore. Perfect plan, Hina. Perfect. Alright. Huh? There's something by the door. Something. He, he didn't say someone, no, something. There's a slit of paper on the floor by the door. I'd better check it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> he actually meant something. For some reason, when he said, I thought when he said something that he meant like, you know, because I, I'm used to people knocking at, at my door, which is usually what happens when it's like, huh, something at the door. So that's why I thought that it was strange that he referred to someone as something, but it actually was something. So yeah, I was the fool, not Makoto. This piece of paper, it looks like someone must have slipped it under my door. Meet in the dining hall. That doesn't. Why would you? I guess because it's nighttime. But it's, if it's already nighttime, we wouldn't be meeting in the dining hall in the first place. The handwriting is really good. Unless it's urgent, but then it, wouldn't you just then ring the doorbell? I don't know. But to want to meet up so suddenly? Who wrote it? And why? What's the point of calling me out like this? I'm kind of nervous, but there's no way I can't check it out now. Well, I guess we should. Alright, what is this meeting about? Who's gonna be here? Hero? Yo. Just Hero? What the fuck? I honestly thought it was like an emergency group meeting or assemble, you know? But nope, apparently it is just a message from Hero to Makoto, and he wants to speak with us one-on-one. -on -one. Is he gonna kill us? Because that's something I feel like that, that hasn't really happened yet, and I don't know if it's gonna happen. But I feel like throughout the three chapters so far, Makoto as a character has been just kinda untouchable. Like nobody wants to kill him, but I feel like he would be actually a really good target for anyone if they would want to become a graduate and, you know, graduate, become a black, and then be, be able to escape. I feel like Makoto is the perfect target for them almost, because Makoto is... 
he is good at the class trial, so he actually figures out a lot. I feel like he's the driving force behind all of the, the class trials, you know? Mainly because how else are we going to be involved? Because we're the player that's controlling him, right? So obviously we want the... The designers of the game wanted the player, the, us, to have the most impact in the class trial, so they do it via Makoto, so yeah. But I just feel like it makes sense for from everyone's perspective that they would view as Makoto as like a really likely target because he isn't that physically strong. He isn't like, he doesn't have an ultimate that will make you think like, whoa, this guy, uh, let's be scared of him or, you know, or he's not a good target to kill. So I feel like Makoto is just... I'm surprised nobody has gone after Makoto yet. Like, that could happen maybe in some of the future chapters, but... Or Hero is gonna plan to do it right now, I don't know, but... Kinda strange, because... Hero himself, I, I mean, you know, I've been jo jokingly saying that he's been kinda useless, but... Maybe he's been, like, keeping everything to himself, and he's been trying to figure things out on his own as well, I don't know. But let's find out! Alright, Hero, what do you got? Hero? Then... The letter I found in my room. You know? Yep. I wrote it. Your handwriting is really nice. Hmm. Well, I was always taught that if you had bad penmanship, a ghost would come and haunt you. Okay. Was that his parents' like uh, technique, their, their parenting style? Just like, no matter what happens, if he was bad at anything, a ghost would just come and haunt him. Oh, if you don't eat your vegetables tonight, a ghost will come and haunt you. And now he's just been so traumatized by ghosts. That might explain his uh, reaction every time the word ghost gets mentioned, because Hero always goes like, G -g 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 Ghost? No! Get it away from me! Who taught you that? And why did you want to meet with me? Hmm. Oh, I just did what Kyoko asked me. Kyoko? Actually... I'm just an errand boy this time, so Kyoko asked us. Hmm. Anyway, what do you say to a late night bath session? Huh? You uh, know? Okay, let's do it. N no, I... I was totally lost. Hiro grabbed me by the shoulder, pulled me close, and whispered into my ear. They always say like late night bath session or just bath session in general because people are watching, right? Because this is the place with surveillance cameras. And they don't really want to make it seem obvious, like, yeah, there's something really important in the bathhouse. So they're just going to say, like, oh, yeah, we should go take a bath together. For serious? It's all an act, so the mastermind won't notice. Everyone's waiting in the bathhouse. All good. What? Then, did Alter Ego finish his search? Y you got it, hero. Let's go take a dip together. I was probably louder than I needed to be. But me and Hero hurried to the dressing room. Oh, everybody, everybody is here. Even Byakuya. I don't see uh, Toko though. As soon as I got to the dressing room, an angry voice echoed out. F you! Hey you! How long were you gonna keep us waiting? Taka's irritated voice pierced the air as he stared Point, uh, pointedly at his wristwatch. It's almost 10 o'clock, you know that! Bedtime for all the good little boys and girls! Does that include you, Taka? <laughs> Shut, Shut up! What? What did you say? You want me to make you cry, little girl? <laughs> Taka, he seems to be even worse off than I heard. Well, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe he's finally started to grow a personality. <laughs> what? You got a lot of poop falling out of that mouth of yours, you know that? Ah, <laughs> oh, there's Toko. How rude. A maggot like you has no right to speak that way to our heaven-sent master. I mean, I understand the fact that Toko is in love with Byakuya, but she's... I mean, you know, I wouldn't call the person that I am in love with a heaven-sent master. So, I feel like she's been really obsessed with him, like even more so than before. And for some reason, it seemed like even Genocide Jack was kind of Genocide Jill was even in love with Byakuya, which oh. is strange for me. Hmm. Are you back to your normal gloomy self? I can hardly keep track at this point. Just, just look at the tongue, Celeste. That's a big giveaway. Look at the tongue. <laughs> shut, hey, shut up. Hey, come on. Well, anyway, everyone's here, right? Then my messenger duty is complete. Hey, you wanted us all to meet here, right Kyoko? So, 
What are we doing here? How about that? Isn't it obvious? It's gotta have something to do with Alter Ego, right? That's right! Yeah, totally! Did he finally find a clue? What is it? A way out? The Mastermind's true identity? Hmm. Alright, Kyoko, where is Kyoko hiding? There you are, right behind the Akuya. Alright, tell me, girl. It's gone. No, it's not! Fuck me. Gone? I came here a little early to check up on things. And that's when I discovered... Alter Ego. The laptop has disappeared. What? No way! You're kidding, right? Oh my god. Fuckity, fuck, fuck, fuck. What? Are you for real? I mean, it was kind of somewhat expected to happen, but still. The strange thing about this is, right, is that not. that the list of uh, suspects is actually quite long. It's actually more than just the 10 of us. Cause I think... I think... It wouldn't be too surprising if the Mastermind or Monokuma are both together, you know? If they found out and they just took the laptop away. That wouldn't surprise me at all. So they are added to the list of suspects as well. So yeah... Uh, not good. Oh. Oh. Huh? What? She's gone? F you! You can't be fudging serious! What did you do with him? Was it the mastermind? Did they finally notice what we were up to? Shut up, neighbor! Wrong. Are you probably hearing like drilling? He's trying to drill a hole into my wall like he's trying to come into my bedroom or something? I don't know. I told Alter Ego to yell if anyone he didn't recognize appeared. If it was the mastermind, I'm sure he would have alerted us. Ah, that was true. So it has to be one of us. Well... Maybe we just... Missed it! However... I was in the laundry room right next door all day. There's no way I wouldn't have heard it. Uh, what are you doing in the laundry room all day? Like, I, can, I can understand doing laundry for a little while, but that doesn't take all day. But... If it wasn't the mastermind, then... <laughs> the solution to this particular mystery is obvious! It couldn't only have been... Him! Without a doubt! Mr. Ishimaru! You stole her, didn't you? What? What? I'm the ultimate moral compass. I would never do something like that. Hmm. I don't think it counts when you say it about yourself like that. F you! You're the suspicious one here. You're nothing but a big jiggling sack of fat. Oh my god. <laughs> he just said that. That she is nothing but boobs, which isn't technically wrong, but it's not right either. <laughs> Shows what you know. This isn't my true form. I still have three more transformations left. Damnation! Uh, uh, wait. I mean, it wasn't me. Everyone knows you're the thief. <laughs> wrong. It's you. You're serious? Well, I'm sure it was one of you. So, whoever did it, just hurry up and confess. Wrong. No, there's no way either one of them did it. Huh? Huh? Why not? So... I told Alter Ego to yell if either Taka or Hifumi came into the dressing room. What? 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 <sighs> it was a countermeasure against the clear danger that one of them might come for it. <sighs> but... I never heard any yell. Indeed. Exactly. Which means it wasn't them. But... Then... Who was it? So that's it. The fundamental circumstances are becoming clear. If it wasn't the mastermind, and it wasn't Taka or Hifumi, then quite simply, it was someone else. Thank you, Sherlock. Hmm. Makoto, Interesting. Celeste, Sakura, Hina, Toko, or myself. One of us must be the thief. That's terrible! Why would any of us want to steal Alter Ego? How about this for a reason? There is a traitor among us. Huh? Hmm. One of us is working for the mastermind. A spy. Alright, remember the end of chapter 2? Yeah? The thing that I... that was though... Like, 
if I were, I'm, I'm trying to recall that particular uh, conversation between Monokuma when he, he was sitting like in that chair and you saw the vague uh, mannequin-esque figure of the person that he was talking to which was a spy the thing that he said was it, it, I had the feeling that he was talking to someone he was who was already dead but that doesn't quite make sense unless the people who are quote unquote dead aren't really dead which was a sort of a theory that I mentioned earlier but I don't know if that's exactly what happening but I don't know right so but he said the, the thing that struck out for me to most during that conversation was that he was supposed to be the one that was supposed to stir things up and he was supposed to one be the person that makes makes the first move but he didn't do it so it had to be someone that was rather passive at the very beginning and but he didn't really get any instructions if I remember correctly he might have gotten some but nothing that really comes to mind but um, I don't know I don't freaking know I really don't know out of the three, no, never mind. I was trying to think of like that that mysterious picture, remember? That really strange picture of Mondo, Leon, and Chihiro, but all three of them are dead also, so... Man, uh, I don't know. I can't quite think of who the spy is. And that's the one who stole Alter Ego. Can you deny the possibility? I mean, it makes sense, right? If someone is a spy here for... Uh, Monokuma or the mastermind and they, then uh, we found something that we're hiding from Monokuma right so that is information that the spy would definitely give to Monokuma and then Monokuma might give uh, just the order to for the spy to just take uh, Alter Ego away from us it can't be hmm. I've actually been thinking for some time now that there might be a spy among us mastermind brought someone in to help keep things moving smoothly that's what I the thing was I originally thought that was Kyoko and it isn't too far-fetched that she still is that way because the thing is right let's say Monokuma wants to put a spy or has put a spy among us then obviously you're not you don't want to be uh, you're gonna try and do everything in your power to not be suspicious right so the thing that I felt about Kyoko is that she's been really helpful, but almost too helpful to the point where it would make sense that she's the only reason for her being this helpful is so that people don't expect her or suspect her of being a traitor or a spy. Because she's the ultimate question mark, question mark, question mark, right? So it could be that she was just, and that's the might be another reason as to why she was brainwashed a quote-unquote brainwash that she doesn't really remember anything of her past and that Monokuma just, I don't know, sort of programmed her in a way, not literally programmed, but you know, instructed her to do like only these things and that's about it. Like, okay, you're only here to to make, uh, to keep the show on the road, to keep it going and to make things happen how I want them to happen. And it would make sense. Like out of the most of them, I actually suspect Kyoko the most, sadly. Because it would make sense for her, but dang, I don't want Kyoko to be it because she's been so helpful. But that, once again, could all just be an act, you know? Fuck. In. Hell. A spy for the mastermind? A... Traitor? No. It's impossible. Something that horrible. Th there's no way! What? Why do you not speak? Are you struck silent by your inability to comprehend such a possibility? Say what? I don't care! <laughs> I it's don't like care who, someone, anyone, save her. Please, rescue her. I'm begging you. I just want to see her smiling face again. Damn it! Same here. How many times do they have to kill, bro, before they're happy? I'll beg, I'll scrape my head across the ground. Just please, give him back. So, um, this is pretty messed up. But still, I think I kind of get how they feel. At the very least. I think Alter Ego is most likely still safe. For the moment, at least. Yes, indeed. If they wanted to destroy it, they wouldn't have taken it. They would have done it right here. I see. So you're saying whoever did it has something else in mind for him. Something else? Damn it! That doesn't matter! Nothing. Nothing else matters. 
no matter what it takes. I'm gonna get him back. That's my promise as a man. Oh, in a mondo popped up right I there. I swear I will save her. Using the power of love. Uh oh. Is it officially nighttime now? Hmm. It's nighttime. There is nothing to be done. It is unfortunate, but we will have to leave to search for tomorrow. For now, everyone get some sleep. <laughs> How can you be so casual? We don't have time to wait around. <sighs> what good are you if you are too tired? You will be much more effective after a good night's sleep. <laughs> Who gives a crap about effective? We're talking about our feelings here. Calm down. Anything we do at night brings a higher chance of the mastermind noticing us. Celeste is right. We should begin our investigation tomorrow morning. What do you think, Makoto? I agree with you. If we run around tonight in a panic, the mastermind is sure to notice, and we won't get anything done. Taka, Hifumi, I know how you feel right now, but it's best if just for tonight. You can try to endure it. This is fine. Okay, then let us part for today. We will begin our search for Alter Ego in the morning. <laughs> and you should start thinking about what I said. Someone may very well be spying for the mastermind. Like as much as I kind of dislike Byakuya at the moment, just for the sole purpose that he was like acting all high and mighty, right? Thinking that he's better than everyone else. Like that's the part that I really dislike about Byakuya, but he is a, a smart person for sure. And he, he, I don't know, I feel like his, his way of thinking makes a lot of sense in most situations. Or at least in pretty much every situation so far. Because that, that spy, the fact that there could be a spy in here, which is something that I thought might be going on earlier. It, it does make a lot of sense, and it's very, very possible. So, yeah. As much as I don't like him at the moment, he he is he's still he's sound of mind, you know, which is an important thing. Alter Ego. Gone. As quickly as he appeared. We'd finally discovered some small measure of hope. But even that was taken away from us. And we couldn't even put up a fight. We were given hope, and then, when that hope was taken away, despair. It's just like, just like what the mastermind is doing to us. That's why I thought that this might originally be like a trap as well, you know? Be because why else? I don't. It doesn't make any sense for the mastermind to put a surveillance camera in every single freaking room except the bathhouse, like. It doesn't make any sense, okay? You can argue like, yeah, okay, it might be for privacy reasons, but then there there shouldn't be uh, surveillance cameras in bathrooms. There shouldn't be surveillance cameras in everyone's personal room either because that that is a, you know, that's one of the more private places, uh, even more private than the bathhouse. So it doesn't make any sense why there isn't a surveillance camera in the bathhouse, but every other freaking room there is. Like this, this just really sp speaks to me as just... Not necessarily a trap, but just a false sense of security. Like, oh yeah, we'll just give them a place where they think they are safe. And that was the place where the laptop was found as well, right? Which makes it strange as well. Like, sure, Chihiro could have put it there, but then, then it might, then it makes me think like Chihiro was working for the Mastermind or Monokuma. Uh... The thing about this is, right, is that. I feel like throughout this entire journey, there are, there are only, if you are, sh if you are think you are sure about something at some point during the story, I feel like the more you come to know, all of your previous theories will just be like, okay, what, that actually didn't turn out to be right at all, it's just like, what the fuck, I feel like you just can't, it's just impossible to try and guess from the very beginning or just at some point in the story to actually know exactly what the fuck is going on because there will always be these twists and turns along the road that you will never see coming at all. Oh my god. Well... Then... Could it really be true? Whoever stole Alter Ego... Could they really be working for the Mastermind? If that's true... 
No! It can't be! There's no way! I didn't even realize I yelled that out loud. The scary thing isn't the idea of someone spying on us. What's really scary is... The idea that we're starting to doubt each other again. That scares me more than anything. Damn it, but the thing is that that's this whole environment, right? This environment is not set up for anyone to trust each other. Everyone should, and I don't blame anything for, for anyone to have the same mindset as I have, right? To just be doubtful of every single person that is here. I definitely would not blame anyone if they didn't trust me or Makoto either, you know? It just makes a lot of sense because this place is not set out for that. This environment is not a good environment to trust anyone because trust can actually be your downfall. Damn it! I threw myself into the bed, trying to shake off all those unsettling thoughts. Before long, I fell into a restless sleep. Alright, it's theater time. Murder is a word whose definition changes with time, with place, with society. If murder is evidence of abnormality, then all of the history's greatest heroes must have been abnormal. Sometimes, the murders that people forgive are way more abnormal than the ones they don't. 